Hello and welcome to Against the Storm Patch 0.54, the World Events Update. This update includes a lot of visual changes, a lot of uh, UI UX stuff, some new iconography, some new illustrations, sound effects, well I guess that's audible, but you know what I mean, some new text descriptions, things like that, but also brings five new world events. So those uh, five new world events, which are the major uh, element of this, uh, also include some new icons and pictures and images that are also applied to the uh, nine existing world events. And you should be able to see that the first one of them here, a sample of one of them here, the Stormbird Egg. Uh, so it has this nice uh, image here associated with it. And you can now also read the... Uh, the options you have there and what you can do with that world event or you can ignore it of course and it's much more um i guess much more forward and much more apparent apparent to you as you are uh, doing these as you are selecting these events than it was before and then having that nice image there kind of just gives the game uh, a little bit of um a depth i suppose so there are five new events as i mentioned uh, they are called the gambler the crashed airship Followers of the Forsaken Gods, Wandering Eremite, First Dawn Company Caravan. And they added the new custom illustrations and sound effects. I forgot about their sound effects there, too. Two nine world events The Gambler, Hanged Viceroy, Ca Commenda Contract, Obsidian Loremaster, Wandering Eremite, Followers of the Forsaken Gods, Stormbird Egg, that one right there, Cloaked Wanderer, and First Dawn Company Caravan. The rest of the events still do still have a placeholder illustration and a universal sound effect, and they have plans to round those out in future updates. So the next piece is um, the aforementioned changes to the uh, some to some of the UX stuff, and one of those is now when you have a world event that's uh, that's applied to your town, whether it's a one-time event or it's a cycle, it's an event that carries through the cycle. Um, you can now see on your on your uh, screen above where the orders would be pinned uh, the progress you have toward the um, toward the world event, which is really really nice to see. And the world event objectives are also shown in the embarkation panel as you are uh, as you are setting up your embarkation uh, group and um, resources and things, just like the world event modifiers are shown. The, sorry, the modifier tiles are shown. There are also a lot more uh, and clearer tooltips when hovering over the question marks and world events in the world map. And we'll go take a look at those in a moment as we uh, jump in uh, to jump into the world map. But I want to kind of go through the overview a little bit here first. You can also take you can also reforge a seal at any point during the cycle. Uh, you no longer have to wait till the end of the cycle. It will automatically end the cycle for you as you attempt it, whether you succeed or fail. Uh, your attempt will end the cycle. So you don't have to time it right. You don't have to, you know, work it out right. If you get to that seal and you attempt that uh, that forbidden forbidden forest? No. Whatever the... the <laughs> I'm forgetting the name of it right now. The, the, the biome that's around that seal, uh, that will automatically end your cycle. It'll be the last town in your cycle. Which is, I think, a better way to have done it than the way they had it. So that was really nice. Um... And also, uh, the seals now highlight as you um, as you're able to embark upon them. So you know that you are taking the seal, and you know that the the biome around it is that forbidden biome that I can't remember the specific name of. It's in here somewhere, but I'm not reading it right now. You still have to have all the fragments, of course, um, but you don't have to wait until you're at the end of the cycle to to embark upon it. It just force ends your cycle. So here you can kind of see what, what the world map would look like as you approach one of those uh, seals. The next bit here is uh, there's some UI changes in the game uh, in the game as well, in, in the actual city, city builder component of the game. And one of those is totals of the total number of villagers, total number of free workers, and the total number of homeless people you have, uh, totaling all three of your selected uh, species, which is very nice because you don't have to do that quick 
uh, uh, you know, eyeball math. It's like, okay, do I have, yeah, I have, nope, I have only this many. Oh, I need to build houses for this many more people. You can quickly, uh, quickly see that at the top of the, of the, uh, the HUD there, which is really nice to have above the species panels. That's what I meant to say. Uh, yeah, so population, free workers, and homeless people. And among these, there are uh, many more icons in the game that are um, that are custom made to replace some store bought assets that we'd been seeing all along. And so you can see a few more of them here in uh, in the upgrades panel. Also, uh, in this sample of the upgrades panel, there are many, many new icons. Sixty one new icons, to be specific, to um, to continue replacing some of that original uh, store bought iconography. Uh, as they were developing the game, of course, they chose to use store-bought stuff because it was a little bit easier, and they didn't know exactly what they were going to want. But now that the game is nearing its end of development cycle, uh, they they wanted to replace a bunch of that iconography with custom stuff to make it unique to the game and the setting of the game. Beyond that, there's a bunch of balance changes uh, that are all small, but uh, they add up, I suppose. And... Um, one of those is maximum trade route distance now is has been increased so that you have more trade more towns within your trading range as you work your way out away from the citadel so the citadel is reachable from a much further out distance and more of your towns will be visible from a new town and i think that's good because they since they did away with the other factions and also the embarkation range is a little bit bigger, I think, or feels bigger anyway, and the map is way bigger. You end up with a, and, and also, by the way, the, the cycles can be longer. The, um, you end up to a point where you can be very far away from your, uh, from your citadel and only have a few towns within range. So that way you have a little bit more trading, especially early in a cycle or mid mid game I guess cycle where you can still see the citadel but uh but you're you're a little bit further away now uh, obelisks spawn a little bit more often in small glades so we might actually see one this time and the amount of fertile soil tiles spawned around haunted farm ruins has been increased as well and there's of course a bunch of bug fixes and stability fixes Apparently, there were still a lot of uh, stability issues in the last update. Folks had problems with game stability. That should be uh, greatly improved now. So, of course, if you have problems, make sure you report them so that they can find the bug that's causing your issue and hopefully fix it as well. Um, sealed Forest. That's the name of it. Not Forbidden. Sealed Forest. That's the name of the biome around the, uh, around the, the, the seals. Of course. Uh, leather is an as a possible resource bonus resource from the trees there, so that's kind of a nice thing, I guess. I mean, we haven't played it yet here on my series, but um, assuming that uh, fabric materials were a little bit rare, so now you can get a little bit of leather too from the trees. Um, let's see. Ore deposits can no longer spawn under resource nodes. Interesting. It's good that they fix that. That's interesting though. Let's see. I had a couple more things that I had highlighted here. Uh, I mentioned earlier a bunch of tool tips that have been added. Uh, world events, modifier tiles, things like that on, on the name, how the, t how the uh, event works, um, how to interact with them, etc. So that uh, you can understand, uh, especially as a new player, what they do and what they mean. And also they point out that they are only there for the one game, uh, the one the one city. They don't they don't stick around or anything like that. Which, as a new player, I can understand being confused by. Oh, that disappeared. I wanted to do another one, kind of thing. So, if you, I mean, if you if you build a town next to it, of course it disappears. There's also tool tips now on the question mark markers on the world map, which would be really easy to do. And in fact, let's go ahead and jump into a world map here and take a look at some of these things. So now we hover over a. Um, this is oh, that's different. Okay, we can see a little bit more uh, details on on these things. Um, fortunately, we don't have any world events that are visible. 
Um, but we could look at a question mark to see that it's a point of interest and how it wor works out. It could be a world event or a modifier. And so that way you can understand what those question marks even mean. I wonder if they still have the chests. I don't know if those chests are gone now or not. Because that was kind of a thing with um, with the uh, with the other factions, too. I wonder if those are gone now. Interesting. And here, uh, that was the same, I think, for the seals. Uh, there's custom flavor text to reward pop-ups for world events, uh, which those are the those are the pop-ups that uh, come up after you win the challenge offered by the event. So that's kind of nice to kind of give you a little bit of information about the event or how how you succeeded in the event kind of thing. Um, I mentioned about the uh, the world event having uh, information appearing in embarkation panels along with uh, you know where the world modifiers are and things like that so that's a very useful thing because it is i mean they have the same kind of effect in a way as the modifier tiles so it's good to have the events in there as well as i mentioned there's still there's a lot of other um a lot of other description wording changes and stuff as well um i don't think any of it's that highly important but um, it makes they've done a lot of things to clean up some of the un, some of the clarity in some of those things, and one specific one is the uh, the use rainwater in engines order. Uh, they made it more clear that it only counts when using rain pump engines and not the actual production with the rainwater. So I think there might have been a question at some point in in the comments or in a chat of my series or maybe i mumbled something at some point as to whether does that count for production and it or does production count for that and it does not uh so they've cleaned that up in addition to the icons we saw the archaeologist office has icons uh the firekeeper bonuses all have new icons service buildings bonuses all have icon new icons and they're, they've, they're just, they point out that they have done a lot recently. They're still working on them, and they have more to do. So we'll definitely see some more icons coming in, in, in you know, future updates. And so the rest of it, rest of the patch notes have to do with, um, oops, have to do with bug fixes. And, you know, a lot of the bug fixes are very, very specific issues. But as always, make sure that if you did have something you thought was a bug, uh, check out the bug fixes portion of the of the patch notes to to see if uh, the thing you thought was a bug is in there. If not, make sure that you uh, report it and try to provide as much info as you can, so that you can um, so that hopefully that bug can be fixed. And then finally, uh, there's some new sound effects that um, that have to do with finishing settlements, finishing cycles. And the deeds panel has updated interaction sounds, which is interesting. I didn't think those were different than the rest of the panels here, but I guess they are. But in the final thing in this patch note is the game is currently on sale. So if you have not yet purchased it and it's a game you're interested in, if you've been watching my series, you know, for, for since the game's been on Steam or even since the game's been an Epic and you haven't purchased it yet, it's 35% off. For uh, in US dollars, that's a $30 game down to 1950, 19.49. Um it's probably about the same in euros. Uh, your local currency may vary if you don't use those currencies. But it should at least result in a fairly decent savings. So if you've been waiting, maybe now is a good time. Check it out, of course. If you and if you have it on your wish list uh, in Steam, it probably already told you this. Um, but if you don't have it on your wish list, make sure you put it down there so that you're notified during sales. But I think this is it for this patch note. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, information that I missed, anything along that line. Um, and I will see you in a new town in the next or over the next two to three days uh, back to the usual schedule of uh, Friday, Saturday, possibly Sunday, third episode. Uh, just depends on how long the town takes, what uh, measures we take to speed it up or slow it down. And uh, we'll, we'll explore some of the new iconography. We probably won't, we won't see any of the world events. We won't see any of the um, any of the other components to the to the thing, I don't think. But uh, we'll at least see some of the some of the changes, some of the balance changes, and things like that, um, as part of the new town. And, and of course, we'll see hopefully some of the stuff that came in the last update that we hadn't seen yet, 
uh, as part of this next town. So thank you all for joining me, and I will see you all in the town. Bye for now.